Good evening everyone and welcome to another edition of Just Fish Outdoors TV. Just Fish Outdoors is brought to you by Ranger Boats, where we still build legends one at a time. Yamaha Outboards, the reliable choice. Lawrence, world leader in fishing since 1957. Jean LaRue Lures, Bobby Garland Lures, and Blue Water LED. I'm your host, Dale York, and I designed Just Fish Outdoors to focus on fishing, freshwater, lakes, and streams, and provide information, tips, and techniques, along with how-to segments for catching everything from crappie to catfish. We will also provide tips on equipment, tackle, boating, and much, much more. All of this is aimed at helping you catch more fish and have fun doing it. So grab a cup of coffee, a comfortable chair, and let's talk about my favorite subject, fishing. <laughs> it's a little chilly around this part of the state right now, but uh, we do have some information coming up from one of our good friends, Dave Clark of Fish on Guide Service. Uh, he has been out and about this week, and uh, he's going to tell us what he's looking well, at. David Clark doing well, weekly David fishing Clark report and weekly for, uh, fishing Del report York's just for uh, Del Del York's Web just Fish Outdoors webcast on Thursday nights. Uh, this past week, I've been over on Sooner Lake uh, quite a bit. Uh, we had some really good trips. Uh, the hybrid striper seem to really be feeding right now during the fall. Water temperature is dropping down around, it's around 58 degrees right now. Uh, there wasn't live shad mostly, but uh, we did catch a few on cut bait, cut bait and free lines cast out the back on the uh, free lines and then uh, caught a few real nice uh, blue cats on the uh, free line with a white perch head. We threw it, threw it out on a pretty good sized pole and just let it kind of float around out there. And then big blues kind of like that. I think our biggest was 20 pounds, but we had a few more in the high teens and stuff. And it was, it was a good week on the Sooner Lake. Most of the fish we're catching is anywhere from 25 to 35 foot of water. And then, like I said, most of them's on down lines on live bait. And they like those small thread fin shads, but uh, you do catch a lot of white perch when you catch those. You want to go a little bit less action, you get a little bit bigger baits, and that'll keep the white perch off, and you'll catch the hybrid stripers. And the saw guy were pretty active. We caught one or two saw guy every trip, which isn't a whole lot, but we weren't fishing for them. Uh, and a couple of more keepers, so they're getting to be pretty active this time of the year, too, also. It's Keystone Lake, I've only seen one or two reports, and uh, no, nobody was doing any good there. It's still real muddy from the last heavy rains we had on Keystone, so I haven't seen any reports other than that they didn't do any good. If they're, if anybody's doing any good, then uh, they're not reporting much on it, on the, the people that I watch and uh, that I talk to. Sky took the lake. I did see a couple of reports. Uh, some friends of mine were up there on Sunday, and they did pretty good on the hybrid stripers. It seemed like they wanted the smaller baits. That's what they told me, and most of them were caught on down lines on the uh, Sky Took Lake on Live Shad. But I did get two reports where some guys were catching them in the back end of coves uh, on uh, lures while they were bass fishing. And that went on pretty good, but that was mainly right at dark, uh, right at dusk and stuff, and they were going pretty good. I didn't see anything on Ulaga. I did get it back on Sky Took to see another report where the guys were catching crappie again and still the same pattern has been for a while now, 15, 25 foot of water around brush piles and standing temper, mainly on jigs and some some on minnows. I didn't, on the Keystone, I didn't see any on Keystone Lake on the crappie fishing at all, probably because the water's so muddy, but there is a gazillion jad, shad on Keystone, like some of the guys said. If you're a bass fisherman and you like the bass fish, Sooner Lake, uh, we've caught some really nice bass over there this year. Our biggest bass is a large amount, a large amount was eight pounds. Uh, last year, this time of year, we caught some nine, uh, nine and nine and a half was our biggest. Uh, but they also hang out there and uh, out in the 30 foot of water if you're a bass fisherman. There are, there are a few tournaments going on on Sooner Lake early in the mornings and stuff, so be careful if you're over there running around. It is kind of foggy at times on Sooner Lake if they're generating in that fog and the water temperature is different. But right now they're not generating, but we did have some pretty good fog last week for a couple of days. Anyway, it's David Clark, Fish on Guide Service. Phone number 918-724-6786, or you can contact me on my Facebook page or my website. Fish on. 
Dave, thanks a lot for that report. Uh, I know, uh, you know, one of the things we need to point out in respect to uh, Sooner Lake is uh, it's a warm water discharge lake. Uh, it has a power plant on it, and, uh, you know, it, it it can really, really heat up uh, uh, even in the wintertime. Uh, it's, uh, it's a very, very, uh, very, very good lake to fish in the wintertime, and uh, it uh, it can really be good most of the winter when you get in that cold water conditions. Uh, it can it can really really shine on as with most of your power plant lakes. You know if you're lucky enough to have a power plant lake in the area that you live in, uh, you know you really really want to uh, try to target that even in the cold weather because usually the colder the outside or the ambient temperature gets to a certain degree, uh, those warm water discharge lakes can really, really turn on, folks. So, you know, don't uh, don't overlook those because those can really make the difference between you having uh, a pretty successful day on the water and not. <laughs> so that, that'll bring us in today's topic, and I, I've got a couple of requests for this. Uh, y- you know, one of the most important things we can do uh, to, to maximize our fishing time is keeping a organized tackle system, whether it's in your boat or in your house, being able to give ac- get access to the tackle you need when you need it, it is really, really key. So keeping an organized tackle box is, is really key for any angler. Yeah, because what it does, it helps you maximize your time on the water. And uh, we're going to talk about organized tackle, uh, how, how I organize some of my tackle, what, what I try to do, what helps me out. And then basically we're going to talk about uh, uh, the do's and don'ts a little bit about organized tackle and also uh, some of the ways to make it easier. Uh, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to get organized. But it certainly, certainly uh, gives you a a big advantage when you're uh, trying to maximize that time on the water. Uh, Organized tackle makes it easy to find what you need when you need it. And that's key, folks. And, you know, it it helps you catch more fish by being ready to make a a quick lure change when you need to or want to. Uh, You know, properly stored tackle also is not going to get damaged. Uh, it usually will last longer. Uh, it, it's it's very much protecting your investment. It, it's it's uh, you know very easy to get several hundred dollars or more. Don't tell your wife I said that. But it's very very easy to to get a lot of money invested in your tackle. Uh, you know the way anglers store, organize, and carry gear. Uh, that's really what contains in a tackle management system. Um, you know, some of your tackle container options, uh, probably the most popular is uh, uh, your clear plastic tackle boxes. Uh, they're good all around choice for many types of fishing. They're durable. They're fairly inexpensive. They had good construction. Uh, you know, it stands up to rough treatment. Uh, if you drop them on the ground, drop them in the boat, drop them in the garage, uh, many many of the newer boxes are, are really built with multiple latch systems on the box, and uh, you know they're just a whole lot better than what they were uh, quality wise just not so many years ago. It uh, you know it keeps your gear secure in those little compartments or however you have it arranged, uh, you know, and they come in a, a, a wide variety of sizes. You know, everything from, you know, little bitty two, three, four inch square boxes on up to the bigger, you know, foot plus uh, square boxes. So, uh, you you know, you really can have a a tackle box or a clear box suited for whatever you want to put in that particular box. It's it's easy to organize. It's easy to, to, uh, uh, you know, come up with a custom box specifically for, uh, whatever species you're fish for or whatever bait you're trying to keep in it. You know, the, the tackle ba- uh, bags are also uh, available. They're, they're soft-sided. Uh, you know, the main compartment is used for carrying removable of these plastic tray, these plastic boxes that I'm talking about. 
uh, you know, the flexibility of these bags makes it very useful useful uh, for anglers who chase different fish species, maybe on a single trip. Uh, and, and it's very easy to take from the garage. Uh, you know, you organize that bag in the garage, taking the plastic boxes that you want, put them in that, and then put it in your boat, and, and you know, you're good to go. Uh, you know, it's just like switching out uh, uh, different uh, lines on your reel, so to speak. It, you know, it, it can house a lot of things. Uh, and especially if you chase different species on a single fishing day. Uh, you can use, uh, you know, like I said, different tactics uh, as far as tackle goes from one trip to the next just by swapping out some of these clear plastic uh, boxes. So it, it is really a good thing to, to look at. Uh, the bags can also have other compartments and pockets for tools, sunglasses, uh, you know, knives, suppliers, uh, even, uh, 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 you know, other things like... Uh, scents and things like that uh, you can really customize these things uh, to to just handle a lot of different options uh, other specialized containers are available for specific gear uh, you know like i said uh, you you can get specific containers for uh, you know storage binders you can have uh, one soft-sided bag that has multiple binders in it that you can flip through kind of like pages in a book and uh, you can carry a, a, a huge assortment of soft plastics uh, trailers uh, a, a lot of different things in in some of these bags uh, you can carry uh, even thin lures or jars of soft bait uh, you, you can really customize a tackle system to really suit your style of fishing and, and that's when you become start to become very efficient with your time on the water once you spend some time doing this uh, general tackle uh, ideas that I'll throw at you here uh, one of the things you can do is group tackle for the same species together uh, you know you may have multiple baits especially for those of us who bass fish uh, you know we, we have <laughs> We have a plethora of baits that we uh, haul around and have in our garage. Uh, and it's very easy to, uh, if, if you don't pay attention to this organization and how you organize, it can be very easy to get on the water and think you've got a bait that you want to fish with that particular time under those particular conditions. And you go rummaging around in your boat and you don't have it you know and, and that that can sometimes really uh, uh cause some extreme stress for the angler as well uh you can or organize lures based on their class uh for instance you can put uh you know crank baits together uh you can put swim baits together uh you know you can you know put your top waters together and then you know if if you want to get even more in depth you can even organize by subgroups like you may have deep diving crankbaits, you may have shallow diving crankbaits, uh, you may have uh, real, real large swim baits, you may have small swim baits, uh, you may have uh, you know different weights that you put the swim baits on when you're throwing them, uh, and uh, you know it's it just it just goes on and on. But you know I I really want to stress here that the more time you spend doing this really 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 folks the more fish you're going to catch in the long run because you're not down in your boat or on the bank or wherever uh rummaging around for whatever it is you're looking for and either you can't find it or you don't have it with you and uh that's that's just uh can be heartbreaking sometimes uh you can even organize your tackle box by time of year uh you may have a tackle package that uh, produces fish in the wintertime when you have the colder water temperatures. You may have a tackle package that produces larger fish or, or, or fish in the warmer water temperatures or in the summertime. You know, I, I know guys that, uh, you know, once the water temperature gets below 52, 53 degrees, 90% uh, of what they have in their boat is a specific lure. Uh, they just don't carry a lot of baits, uh, a lot of type of baits or class of baits, uh, w whenever that water temperature gets too, too cold or whenever it gets down to a specific area. Uh, you know, they clean their boats out, they 
they put one or two types of baits in there, class of baits, and, and that's all they carry the rest of the winter until the water starts warming up again. So you might think about that. Uh, also, that uh, also note, folks, that uh, you know some plastic lures contain chemicals that can really damage your hard baits. Uh, they can damage your hard bait lures, your, your hard plastic lures. They can damage jig skirts, spinner bait skirts. Uh, you know, they can even take the paint off of some of these hard baits. So uh, it's really important to separate those soft plastics to help prevent damage. Uh, they, ca they can also uh, cause rust and damage hooks. So, uh, you know, keep those soft plastics contained uh, in, in that class by themselves. Don't, uh, don't throw soft plastics in with hard lures because you could uh, uh, have a situation where it gets your heart broke. So, so don't do that. Uh, you know, use separate utility boxes to store hooks, sinkers, and, and other small terminal tackle like swivels and beads for those of you who throw Carolina rigs and things like that. Uh, you know, you can even use some of these boxes uh, to, to pre-tie your leaders for your Carolina rigs. Uh, and, uh, you know, it can really, really help you out when you're when you're in that season, when you're throwing a lot of Carolina rigs, and if you do bust off, you just reach in there and pull another rig that's pretty much already done down to the swivel, and uh, it'll really, really reduce your time for reties. Uh, one of the most important things you can do here, folks, really, really help you out, is uh, mark your clear boxes with adhesive waterproof labels uh, and markers. Uh, you know, there's nothing worse than opening up one of your big, uh, compartments in your Ranger and you've got, uh, you know, 15 plastic boxes in there and it takes you five minutes or 10 or 15 minutes rummaging around in there to, to find the, the plastic tackle box that you're wanting or needing at that particular time. So, uh, you know, spend some time, uh, you know, mark those, put, put those water to waterproof labels on there. Uh, you know, and, and some people even go the, the point to where they color code them. Uh, it, you know, I just want to stress folks that the, you know, the more time you spend organizing your tackle, regardless of whether you have a garage full of tackle or a small box full of tackle, the more time you spend doing this is going to equal more fish while you're out there on the water. Uh, you know, if you're out there fishing and it's a heavy dew that morning or, or you get into a little shower of rain, uh, when you get back to the garage, open up those boxes, dry out those hooks, dry out those baits, uh, because in many cases it doesn't take long for rust to set in. And, uh, you, you know, you get a, a decent or, or a bad part of rust on your hook, especially around the tip of it, uh, you, you've got to replace your hooks. I mean, they're, they're just worthless at that time. Um, it, it's, it's just one of those things that you really, really need to spend some time on. And there's really two parts to it. I mean, you, you have a boat or, or, or you have a dock or, or you're a bank fisherman, whatever. You've got the tackle that you carry around whether it's in your boat, in your hand, wherever, in your car, wherever, and then your chances are you're also going to have a, a, a tackle management situation at your home, at your garage, uh, or at your lake house, where, wherever that tackle may be stored or kept. So practicing or taking this tackle organization, uh, even at the house or the garage, uh, it, it, man, it really makes it easy to plan and pack for trips. Uh, fishing trips you know and what I'm going to talk about a little bit here is uh, you know consider the following tips uh, for for a fishing tackle area at your garage or in your home uh, you, you know the number one thing is to have this massive amount of tackle that we carry around or have uh, is accessible Okay, that's number one thing. So, uh, you know, do things like install shelving and storage racks in your area to, to help you organize gear. You know, that, that'll that really, really, really help it keep it safe. Uh, you, you always know where it's at. It's always in the same place. Uh, and you can organize it, spend a little time to whatever situation or whatever system you want to use that makes it easy for you uh, to suit your needs. You know, store extra tackle and gear in, in large labeled plastic containers. Uh, 
if you have a lot of a specific gear or perhaps you have uh, season specific or you may be in a situation where you're you have an ice fishing season and an open water fishing season and you know you could store your gear in, in in large plastic containers for something like that and make it very very easy to get to very very easy to inventory at a, at a very short amount of time um, you can do things like using sturdy coat racks for hanging your rain gear and your other clothing that you may need as well. Uh, you know, that's that can be very important to you as well. Uh, don't, uh, you know, don't uh, overlook that. Uh, you know, one of the most important things I think you can do is uh, you can invest or build or buy or whatever uh, a rod rack to organize and protect your rod and reel combos. Uh, you know, it's very easy anymore to, uh, uh, you know, invest a, a quite a bit of money into a rod and reel combo. And, uh, you know, you sure don't want them laying around the garage or down on the floor or wherever where they can easily get broke, a dog runs into them or whatever. Uh, and uh, all of a sudden your uh, X number dollar rod and reel or your favorite combo, which is even worse, your favorite combo just went up in smoke so <laughs> you know don't uh, uh don't don't overlook that rod rack to to help you preserve and also organize your rod and reel combos um another thing that's extremely helpful is to install a pegboard to maximize your available storage space you know you may not have a large area in your garage or in your home or in your lake home to to store tackle but uh, by installing a piece of pegboard, uh, you will really be amazed at how much tackle you can get on that pegboard just by loading it up on the package that you bought it in. Uh, it's very, very economical to purchase. Uh, the, the steel pegs that go in the board are, are extremely economical as well. And like I said, it's perfect for organizing a lot of tackle in a small space. So don't overlook that pegboard, and uh, I, I think uh, you know you, you'll really, really enjoy that and, and get the most use out of it. So in short, folks, uh, you know, really, the more time you spend on tackle organization, whether it's in the boat or in, in the garage, it's going to be time well worth your effort. Uh, it is just one of the most important things you can do, especially for for the winter months when you may not be out fishing near as often as you would in the warmer climate or the warmer weather months uh it's perfect to get out there and spend some time organizing you know you can organize in the boat and your the tackle in your boat you can organize the tackle in your uh, garage and it's just a marvelous marvelous thing to do and will really really help you out in uh, in the coming months and uh, that's going to just about wrap it up for tonight's show. Uh, we hope you like it. Uh, hit that like. Hit that uh, subscribe button. Uh, you know, if you've got an idea that uh, or, or a question that you want to send over, we'll certainly try to put something together for you and answer your question. Uh, you know, we're on the water a lot. Uh, we don't always get to do the videos that uh, because of weather that we <laughs> like to do. But, uh, uh, you know, we're we're always always talking to people. We're always on the water. We're always, uh, you know, in, in or around this, uh, uh, you know, fishing organization that uh, is Just Fish Outdoors. Uh, you know, we'll be coming up on, uh, you know, one of our busiest times of year here pretty quick. We'll be doing all the trade shows, the boat shows, and the fishing tackle shows here in uh in just a couple of short months so uh, we'll be sure and let you know what's going on there as well and where we'll be and when we'll be there uh so you know like i said be sure you hit that like button be sure you hit that subscribe button that's what makes all this possible uh, and if you have a specific question that you'd like for us to address feel free to do so uh just send it on and, and we'll certainly try to help you out uh, Just Fish Outdoors is brought to you by Ranger Boats, where we still build legends one at a time. Yamaha Outboards, the reliable choice. Uh, Jean LaRue Lures, Lawrence, world leader in fishing since 1957. Bobby Garland Lures, 
and Blue Water LED. Once again, folks, thank you very much for joining us here this evening. Uh, you know, Just Fish Outdoors Live TV is, is on every Thursday night at 7 o'clock Central Time, our YouTube channel. You can catch us there. You can also uh, catch us on Facebook from time to time. And, uh, you know, as always, we're, we're here to help. We're here to educate and teach the art and science of fishology. That's, <laughs> you know, that's what we're all about here, folks. So, uh, uh, you know, just drop us a line. Anything we can do to help, we'll be more than happy to do it. And uh, until next week, this is Dale York saying we'll catch you later. <laughs>